I'm going to introduce to you another new feature in SQL and that is when you've got textual columns, fields which have textual values, then we might want to do things other than just testing for equality. For example, we may say, get me the supply number and status of suppliers whose name begins with S, uppercase. Okay, of course, this is not a very meaningful query in this particular context, but it's actually quite useful in many other situations. Perhaps later on when we uh, look at other databases, we'll see examples where these kinds of things are useful. Okay, so you can do this uh, clearly. The supplier name begins with S only for Smith, nobody else. Okay, so that's the only answer. Supplier name and status only for Smith. The way you'll write this is select supplier number status from suppliers where supplier name is like. So that's a new operator that we are introducing here. It's like and we give a pattern. Okay, and of course it's a textual pattern. So it's within single quotes, but the pattern we are saying it should start, start with an S. Right. So we're saying it looks like it starts with an S followed by, I don't care, any number of characters. Right. Because we're saying all we care about is it starts with an S. Right. It could just be S or it could be S followed by 500 characters or 10 characters or one character or zero characters. It doesn't matter. All it has to do is start, start with an S. So to achieve that, you use the wildcard characters that SQL has and the percent wildcard character matches zero or more other characters. Okay, so this will match a supplier whose name is just S, whose name is Sam, uh, whose name is Solidarity, whatever. Starts with an S, that's all we care about. But of course, because we are doing a text function, this is case sensitive. So if, you, if somebody's name starts with a lowercase S, then under certain settings of the database, it will not match. Of course, that's a matter of setting the database. I think by default, it is actually set to not be case sensitive okay but it's better to assume that it is case sensitive and give the correct response okay so we are using the like operator for pattern matching and within these patterns you can have wildcard characters the first wildcard character we have looked at is the percent wildcard character which matches zero or more characters okay so again time for you to practice give me the supplier number and status of suppliers whose name is s anywhere in it it's the same uh, thing okay that is earlier we saw parts now we're looking at uh, supplier but here we are not saying starts with an s we are saying supplier name and number and status of suppliers whose name has a lowercase s anywhere in it okay so this is slightly different uh, clearly here um, you've got jones has a lowercase s adams has a lowercase s smith doesn't figure because it doesn't have a lowercase s it has an uppercase s so it doesn't actually figure okay how do you get this very simple select supplier number status from suppliers where supplier name like and notice how we've used the same person wildcard character but differently we've said like percent lowercase s percent that is we're saying it can have any number of characters, zero or more characters before the lowercase s, zero or more characters after the lowercase s, but somewhere it has to have an s. That's all we are saying. Okay, so one, this is the pattern that we need to match with uh, this query. Okay, so this will match a supplier whose name is just lowercase s or s appears anywhere. Okay, in this time, in fact, in our example, S has appeared only in the last position, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, this pattern means zero or more characters followed by a lowercase s and again followed by zero or more characters. Okay, so that's how you use the percent wildcard character differently to achieve this, uh, so this uh, matching that we are looking for. Okay, give me the supply number and status of suppliers whose name has an L, lowercase l, as the second character, specifically. Okay, so we're looking for L to be the second character. Now this time we cannot just use our percent wildcard character because the percent wildcard character will match zero or more characters. So if I say percent L, then 
uh, if I say percent L percent, that will match wherever L occurs. But we want L to occur exactly as the second character, right? So the percent wildcard character is not going to help for us, of course. Here our answer is going to be Blake and Clark. Those are the two suppliers whose names have L in the second position. And the way to achieve this is by using the underscore wildcard character, which matches exactly one character. So select supplier number status from suppliers where supplier name like underscore L percent. Okay, that is we are saying it has to have some character unlike percent which matches zero or more characters underscore matches exactly one character. Okay, there has to be a character. You cannot have no characters. Okay, so anything followed by a lowercase l followed by any number of other characters maybe zero characters okay so if you have a supplier whose name is al al a l that'll match or a supplier whose name is blake that'll match right because al has a appearing before the l blake has b appearing before the l and so on okay so this is what you use the underscore matches exactly one single character okay so that's how you get this pattern matching okay so now uh, give me the part number and color for parts whose names start with an uppercase C okay and this is your turn so please pause the video write down your answer then proceed okay so we are looking for parts whose names starts start with an uppercase C so clearly those are the only two parts cam and cog and those are the only two things should that should appear in our result. Very easy to do this. I'm sure you got this. Select part number color from parts where part name like P name like C percent. Right? We are saying it should start with the start with the C. So C is in the first position, followed by any number of other characters. We don't care. So we use the percent wildcard character. Okay, one more for you part number and color for parts whose names have O, lowercase o, anywhere in them. Again, this is your turn. Write down your answer, then proceed. Okay, so that's what we want. Cog and Bolt have an O somewhere in them. Both happen to have them in the second position, but that doesn't matter. And I'm sure you wrote down this. Select part number, color from parts where part name like percent O percent because we are saying O can occur lowercase O can occur anywhere in the part name so any number of characters followed by lowercase O followed by any number of characters and when I say any number I mean zero or more so even if it starts with an O lowercase O or ends with a lowercase O or has O somewhere in between doesn't matter your turn this is a little bit tricky than trickier than others that we've looked at but i would encourage you to uh, think about it carefully write down your answer and in fact what you can do is try out your queries on your database system because you have the database you've imported the tables so you could type out your query see if you're getting the correct answers and then you could proceed that's a fantastic learning experience for you okay uh, so let's see what you got So what we are looking for is part names have exactly three characters. So clearly nut, cam, cog. Nut, cam and cog are the only ones which we need to appear. Okay. Now when we say exactly three characters, we cannot use the percent wildcard character because that's going to match zero or more characters. The only way we can have control over exactly certain number is to use the underscore wildcard character. So you would say select part number color from parts where P name like three underscore characters. In fact, they tend to sort of coalesce together when I type them. But here really what I've got is three underscore characters. So each one is going to ma match one character and there's nothing before, nothing after. So if it matches this pattern, it means it's got exactly three characters. So that is how you would do something like this. part number and color for parts whose name names have at least four characters in them okay 
In the last one, we got exactly three characters. This time we are saying at least four characters, which means it must have four, but it can have any number beyond four. So once again, pause the video, think a little bit, get your answer and then proceed. Again, I strongly recommend that you write your answer, try it out in your database system, see that you're getting the results that you really expect and then continue. Okay, so clearly uh, part names with the, at least four characters are bold, true, uh, those are the two things. Okay, I don't for three and four, both are called screw, uh, but the colors are different. Okay, so it's going to be bold, screw, screw. That's going to be our answer. Okay, so uh, P2, P3, P4, green, blue, and red. That's what we're going to get. So I assume you must have got this right. It's not too difficult. So we've got part number, select P and O color from parts where part name like underscore, 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 underscore to match four characters. But we are saying at least four, so it could have some more if you want, so percent. Okay, so that will be four characters plus zero or more, which we don't care about. Okay, so we are using both the underscore and the percent wildcard characters to achieve this functionality. Okay, so with this query, we are entering into a different kind of territory. Let's examine the query. It says for every shipment, get the supplier name, part number and shipment quantity. Look at the query carefully. What information does your shipment table have? The shipment table has supplier number, part number, project number and quantity. Okay. But what we are asking for is for every shipment, get me the supplier name, part number, shipment quantity. So part number and shipment quantity are both going to come from the shipment table, shipments table. But the supplier name has to come from the suppliers table. So for the first time, we are looking at a query which we need to use two tables to satisfy. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. That's the shipments table in its entirety, the complete table. If we had asked only for supplier number, part number, shipment quantity, we could have taken it out. We could have said supplier number is here, part number is here, shipment quantity is here. Just select those three columns and you're done. But unfortunately, we're not asking just for the supplier number. We are asking for the corresponding name of the supplier. So we to go to the supplier table, find the name of supplier S1, find the name of supplier S2, find the name of supplier S4 and put those in place of the supplier numbers. Okay. Now in SQL, when you want to do something like this, you have to use multiple tables. So what we really want to do conceptually is for the first row, since we are talking of supplier S1, we want to add all the information for the supplier S1 to that row. Okay. In other words, what we can think we are doing is we've got this from the shipments table. Let's extend the shipments table by not the shipments table itself. Let's create a new table, a master table or a mega table, which has information about both shipments and suppliers, but with the correct row uh, with the correct row of the supplier table appended to each shipment table. So for example, to the first row, we appended information about supplier S1. So for the second row as well, because second row also has supplier S1. Then for the following several rows where the supplier is S2, we have appended the information of supplier S2. Okay. S2 Smith, S2, uh, S2 Jones, S2 Jones, S2 Jones, etc. Okay. And then for when it comes to supplier S4, we have appended the information about supplier S4. Okay. Now I'm just saying we have appended all this. You're not actually going to do it like this because after all, you're going to be writing an SQL and the underlying SQL processor is going to do something. But conceptually, this is what is going on. Okay. So this is what we want to do. We want to create a bigger table, a mega table that has all the columns that we are trying to select. It has all the columns from multiple tables properly joined 
because in this row the supplier is S1 so we should really append S1's information here not something else this row the supplier is S2 so we need to append S2's information similarly this row is S4 so we need to append S4 so to append the correct supplier information to each shipments row and from the resulting table select the fields we want so now we can say the first row of the result is going to be Smith P1 200 Smith is the supplier name P1 is the part number 200 is a quantity supplier name part number quantity okay so the second is also going to be Smith P1 700 and then we're going to have Jones uh, P3 100 Jones P3 200 Jones P3 uh, 200 etc 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 okay so we do that and we get the result now when you do something like this in SQL this is called joining of tables okay so we are saying we want to join these two tables but of course you can't just arbitrarily join them because we have to match up the supplier numbers properly okay so this is called joining on supplier number okay so that's why I've shown this arrow here saying that the supplier numbers have to match and then all the corresponding information is going to come so conceptually this join creates a super table from which the system can then select the required columns okay so that is how SQL works you've got multiple tables they've got matching columns so you can join the tables on the matched columns and then you get a mega table and from that super or mega table you can then select the appropriate columns of course we're not going to do all of this we're just going to tell the uh, system we're going to type in an SQL that tells it do this join and then do the selection okay but conceptually that's how it's working so this is a join but we are joining on the field called supplier number so we are joining these two tables the sub shipments table and the supplier table and we are joining them on this particular field okay now you may say well both the fields are called S number is that not enough for the system to match them you know there's a lot of debate about whether you should use this or not you know column names are just column names you could give them anything you could have called this as supplier number and you could have called this elephant for all the system cats these are just names right so you need to say which field you're going to join so you might say join this field on this table to that field on that table and then and the fields may actually be named even differently okay so let's look at how this is done with SQL okay so once you have done the appropriate join we select the appropriate fields right because it said get the supplier name so we got this and the get the part name part number so we got this and get the quantity so we got this and that is why the result is going to be this and this is the result that we are looking for okay how do you get this you say select supplier name part number quantity that we understand but this time we are saying we want to select it from multiple tables which are joined together so we are saying from suppliers join shipments right that is use the suppliers table shipments table and then join the two things but as we said earlier you can't just say join them but you want to say join them such that the supplier number field of the suppliers table matches the shipments uh, supplier number field of the shipments table okay now it doesn't matter in what order you specify them I could have said shipments dot supplier number equals suppliers dot supplier number or the other way it doesn't matter okay so that is how the joining works so you say select and you specify the fields you want and then you say from and then you say which tables you want to be joined and then you also have to say which which is the field on which you're joining them right that is which fields values are supposed to match on this join okay it's very important for you to look at the different aspects of the syntax of join using join in sqls okay now when you look at it like this it might look straightforward right or complicated whatever it is but I would say following this slide I'm going to be giving you some work for you to do your turn I would say take that very very seriously come back look at this query write a couple of them try them out 
make sure you understand this because otherwise we'll be looking at more and more complex queries as we go forward and things can get messy if you don't follow things right away. Okay, so I would say take a good look at this and understand the individual components of this, right? So we are saying we've got multiple tables, 